Uh, welcome back to these series of lectures on the Western Hemisphere. I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, the next three lectures, I believe, about the emergence of Christianity in the context of the Roman Empire. Uh, this first lecture, I want to talk about language, uh, specifically the difference between um, figurative and literal uh, language. You see this, of course, in the Bible. The uh, a literal reading is a superficial reading. Uh, it's kind of a surface reading uh, of whatever it is that you are reading. Uh, a, a figurative reading looks deeper into the prose for uh, symbolic meaning. So a literal reading is a surface reading. A figurative or metaphorical reading is a deeper reading searching for, say, transcendent or symbolic meaning in the text. And uh, there's a great deal of confusion about uh, these, uh, how to approach uh, the texts, especially in Genesis and the early books of the Bible, in the Old Testament, the Jewish uh, scripture. Uh, I'm going to give you some examples so you can see how this works. Um, it matters not to me which, how you read, what I want you to be aware of is that you are reading a specific way, literally or figuratively, and sometimes you may switch and go back and forth, and you should at least be aware of it so that you can think critically about this material instead of simply accepting it passively. Uh, we all know the story of Adam and Eve. Um, uh, if you read Adam and Eve literally, you have two flesh and blood, blood people. Uh, we even know where they live, don't we? It's almost like you could send them a package, Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, you don't even need a zip code. Um, if you read Adam and Eve figuratively or symbolically, you get something a little different. Uh, literally, they're the first couple. Figuratively, they represent the trials and tribulations that all people go through. Uh, deceit, lust, curiosity, disobedience. Uh, so symbolically, Adam and Eve transcend uh, the sort of fairy tale nature of the literal reading of the same story. The, uh, another good example here would be uh, Jonah and the whale. You may remember this story, uh, God assigns Jonah a task and Jonah does not want to fulfill it. He, see, he seeks to escape this responsibility. I believe he boards a ship, he's in the Mediterranean, he's, uh, he goes overboard a big fish or a whale swallows him up. Uh, Jonah lives in the belly of the beast for some time. And then the whale uh, vomits Jonah up on a beach. And of course he, he, uh, he vomits him up exactly where God intended Jonah to be to begin with. So you can read this literally. You got, a, you got a dude falling off a ship and being swallowed by a big fish and then getting vomited up after living in the belly of the beast. Or you can read this figuratively for its symbolic meaning. Where did Jonah end up? Well, precisely where God intended him to be. So the, figur the figurative or metaphorical reading here would suggest that you cannot escape God's will. That is a transcend transcending message that is as pertinent today as it was uh, 3,500 years ago. I'll give you another example. Uh, it's a famous passage uh, in Joshua 10:13. The Israelites have returned to the Promised Land and they are claiming it uh, through warfare. I believe they're at the uh, city of Jericho. You may uh, remember the story of the walls of Jericho and the Israelites encircling the walls a number of times. And then right there in the scripture, during this horrible bloodletting and this terrible day of battle, it says, quote, and the sun stood still, unquote. Now, if you read this figuratively, I mean, if you read this literally on the surface, it would appear that we have a serious problem with the solar system. Uh, the sun stood still. What would happen to the planets and the rest of the celestial bodies in such a catastrophe? If you read this passage figuratively, uh, you get something quite different. Uh, the meaning here being, will this terrible day of bloodletting never end? The sun is standing still. Time has stopped. And then finally, um, Cain and Abel. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to give you this example in part because later we're going to talk about this conflict between nomadic people and sedentary people, between herders and farmers. 
So this is a good place to int introduce it, plus it gives you a deeper reading of this uh, story that we're all familiar with. Cain and Abel, of course, uh, if you read it literally, what you get are two brothers who both make offerings to God. Uh, Yahweh prefers the, uh, uh, the burnt offering from Abel. Abel, of course, is a herder. Uh, Cain's offering was something from his field, so Cain is a, uh, a farmer. Now, God, of course, prefers the burnt offering. Uh, Cain, in his anger and jealousy, uh, slays his brother in response. Now, a literal reading of this gives us uh, the first murder. What about a figurative reading, a deeper reading of this text? You get something quite different. Uh, historians tell us that the oldest conflict in human history is that between the settled farmer and the nomadic herder. Uh, this all begins uh, round figures about 10,000 years ago in the Middle East or in, the, uh, uh, in Mesopotamia, uh, the land between the rivers, between the Tigris and Euphrates. The earliest civilizations arise here in what today we would call Iraq and uh, southern Turkey. Uh, perhaps north, uh, northwestern uh, or northeastern Syria, this part of the world. Here we see the emergence of the first cities. Here we see the emergence of domesticated plants and animals, uh, of people settling down. Here also we see the, uh, the, uh, the traditional lifestyle of the nomadic herder. Now these two groups have been going at each other for a long, long time. And the problem, of course, is that the herder being nomadic, uh, drives the settled farmer crazy. He, uh, he takes the farmer's uh, grazing land. He steals the farmer's livestock. He breaks the farmer's fences. He takes the farmer's water. And of course, being nomadic, he has no address, so it's not like you can go to his home, knock on his door, and make a complaint. Um, this, this has created tension now for millennia. Uh, consider, Cain is a farmer. Uh, Abel is a herder. The, does the story of Cain and Abel, does it point to this age-old conflict between the settled farmer and the pastoralist who is moving his flocks about the countryside? That's a deeper reading, isn't it? And uh, it has a, uh, a more transcending meaning, uh, both in history and uh, for ourselves. So. Just these examples, are, I'm giving them to you so that you can uh, think about how you read. You can read the same text literally and then turn around and read it figuratively. And you probably do this every day of your life without thinking about it. So the purpose here is to simply to get you to think critically uh, about how you read. And of course we're going to uh, go further and talk about the emergence of Christianity within the Roman Empire. and. Uh, uh, some of this will come back up again. So I'm going to stop this lecture here, and then the next time we'll talk about uh, some of the early institutions of Christianity as it flowers in the early Roman Empire. Thank you.